Hi folks, Tom from Fine Dabby Dozy. Isn't it cool? We're in Scottish Highlands doing some conditional stuff. And this guy knows all about it. I've taken them out and zoned Billy Moore. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit adapting to it. I, I feel like I'm a bit of funny looking guy. But... <laughs> and we're going on some Highlander survival expedition. Some wool blankets. Some it's going to be pretty tough survival. He's better. Fixed hour. Take care about nature. So funny seeing a lanky Dutchman and a Philly Moore. <laughs> so beautiful here, man. Glad you like it. <laughs> Do you like the the freedom below? The freedom, yeah, like. <laughs> you can't do that in trousers. <laughs> Takes very few. <laughs> So this landscape is pretty open, it's gonna rain. <laughs> we'll put our, our beds in among here so that uh, hopefully this fallen tree will protect us from the worst of the weather. I can do the beds and the fire lay and you can do the firewood. These are invasive, so I don't mind killing these. Uh -huh. <laughs> Tight spot. So, in the fetal position. <laughs> you remember that one. <laughs> I was thinking I would sleep in here because I'm small and I get the benefit of being under cover, but I'll be further away from the fire. What do you think? I sleep there, huh? Yeah, obviously I'll, make, I'll put more in the bed. When you were shouting at me, I first of all thought you were saying fish, and then, <laughs> and then the second time I thought you were saying dicks, dicks, and you're pulling up your kilt and going dicks. <laughs> what? <laughs> Don't uh, get us this broke back mountain comes again. Uh, <laughs> I found a few, but they're just like wee nymphs. They are less like to have lime. Yeah, apparently, I. Uh, they have just, to. They have never had a, a host, host before. Yeah.
Yeah, let's get the knife rolling, man. Quick, huh? Very smooth. So I've got like it's a cordage, pine resin, beeswax candle, your flint, all your starter stuff, and then underneath that bit of leather is your charred material. Traditional Highlander fire kit. Yeah, based off some stuff that I've seen, this is sort of my own interpretation, but um, close enough. Bits and pieces in your team. Oh, thank you. Is it hot? A bit hot. New bushcraft knife. It's your heat. So I'm gonna char some material from our fire kit. Um, got some bits of cloth, some punk wood. It's sort of debatable how often people would have charred cloth. I think uh, as cloth was pretty valuable, it would definitely have been the last use of it. So after it was someone's clothes for years, it would have been a cleaning rag for years. You know, so at the very end of its life, then probably people would have charred cloth. Um, I got a nice bit of punk wood here. I'm gonna try that out. Next way of lighting a fire and getting that going. I'm carving not with green wood, it's actually pretty hard. It's juniper, right? Yeah. And it smells lovely. Not rations. Spin some man. Whoop. Cut. Just 
basically how they make oat milk. <laughs> if you cover it, it will sort of go more mushy, or at least more starch. Mushy? Mushy is what you want. I always said that, and then Dylan says, don't say mushy, man. It does mean something in German. <laughs> you know what it means? No. Oats for the win, man. Oats for the win. Nothing beats some Scottish oats. It's just the oats we have, huh? Oats and a bit of salt. There's porridge making competitions in Scotland. No. Yeah. Really? But that's like, if you want to do it, you mad folks. To get like the absolute creaminess, then you would soak it overnight. Spoon isn't uh, really done yet. <laughs> but it worked. <laughs> Improved, man. <laughs> Just, just put the, the shell up to your mouth and just like shovel it in <laughs> like that. Just, just a yeah, it's getting pretty chilly. Uh, the Highlanders didn't have uh, a tarp or something, so uh, no. we better be uh, sheltered here. Probably going to be on and off rain all night. So your feet are there and then you basically fold it back towards you. Like and what about my uh, dirty shoes then? Yeah, maybe take them off. Yeah, but then the feet can be getting cold, man. Uh, tuck in the edges. You have enough to bring it even over your head and then back again so that you actually have a double layer. Oh, man, I'm going to be way to work. <laughs> Sleep well, folks. Sleep well. So the most typical, most multifunctional item of the Highlanders was their kilt, right? Yeah, so technically it's a precursor to the kilt. People call it the Feely Moor. The Feely Moor. So if you look up some historical sources, this is the way that they say they put it on. Um, but as you're going to see, I don't think it's particularly realistic for being out in the wild. And um, that's why I have belt loops in mine. Uh -huh. I've sort of come up with a way for an easier way to put it on when you're outside. Under leg distance and then we start to... Yep. Your knees are going to be down there. We we'll start here. rolling it up a little bit. So the feeling more was um, their sort of everyday item of clothing, their sleeping blanket, it was their anorak, and it was a way of carrying equipment. And here comes the bell. to your body. Now you can uh, get these bits and turn them into big pockets which you can pull quite a lot in. And then at the back of the kilt you have all these pleats. So that was all the, the folds that you did. So now we have a pocket here a pocket here. So you could sort of wear it like this if it was a hot day. And you just got this in the back. So this is where it's, uh, the modern kilt has evolved from. But on um, the feeling more, fit of material at the back. And you can use it as an anorak. You can fling it over your shoulders. Oh, yeah, it's pretty tall. It just gets over. And uh, the traditional wool, the kind would have had a lot of the natural oils in it, lanolin, so it would have been pretty waterproof. And this could be uh, when the weather gets really bad and you get cold. The way that I wear it, basically, Shoulder, you can grab the furthest bits of uh, the back part of the feeling more, bring it around you, tie it in place, and then you've got a really large pocket at the back that you can use to carry equipment. Okay. There you go. Ready to go for a new day. <laughs> okay, let's get some breakfast going. It's a porridge. Man. So much firewood lab, man. <laughs> All this effort.
right, so we've passed this plant. This is a really common plant in the Highlands. And uh, to our Highland ancestors, they knew it as the Mohin. This is it when it's small. It'll get a bit bigger and it'll have a purple flower. It could be used as an antiseptic, the leaves. It was used to split milk so you can make butter. So that's why it's called butterwort in English. They believed to have magical properties. One of them was a love potion so that you could pick the plant and put it under your tongue and then kiss the person that you fancied and it would make them love you forever. So today's a special day in the Celtic calendar. Uh, today is Beltane, 1st of May, which means the goddess Bridge has finally woken up and the Kaliaka winter has gone to sleep again. And um, this was a big day for people living in the Highlands a few hundred years ago. Today they would have had celebrations, done some rituals, and it was the beginning of the summer ritual where the men of the village would stay in the valleys uh, over summer to look after the crops and plant the crops. And the women and children would drive the cattle up to mountain grazing areas like this and live in small dwellings called shielings. And um, so this was part of an agricultural system that went on for hundreds of years. And uh, you can still see some of these shielings left today. And in this area that we've just come in, you can see these sort of small circles of rocks dotted around this flat area. Lots and lots of women and children looking after the cows, making cheese, making butter. But uh, today it's very quiet. And a bit rainy. And a bit three. Julie's got a bit tangled in his filly. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> you still think, man. You have to support the Highlander newbies, not laugh at them. He's dead. Oh my god. How you feeling Julius? Walking all the freaking Scottish mountains on a bit of oatmeal. <laughs> a handful. A handful of oats. No, you mentioned earlier in the day that it was such a tough life it must have been for those Highlanders. Exactly. So, so. This is part of our experience. Guys, right, we're a bit tired and low in energy and late to really find a good shelter. So we're just by this river and we're under an old tree. Might give us a wee bit of shelter. Your turn to light the fire. Is that so? Yep. Wow, cool stuff. <laughs> With the expert watching, huh? Can you go away? <laughs> Okay, uh, fire lighting, man. Yeah, fire lighting. <laughs> making fun of me, huh? <laughs> I'm so drunk. I have some uh, cattail in my pouch. Cattail, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, give me a bit of cattail for a Tinder expander. Only thing is not ready is my energy. <laughs> okay, last time I did this mm -hmm. was with one hand. Really? It's an awful job. No. Hmm.
look at this guy being struggling. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Yesterday went smoother with you, man. <laughs> Look at this mess. I had, I had much more energy yesterday, though. Yeah, but this was not about the energy. I have never been so excited for porridge in my life. <laughs> man, the the Philly, the Philly Moor, mm -hmm. Philly Moor, worked out great until the leather strap went loose again. <laughs> Everything fell over the ground. Took <laughs> double the time to get this as necessary. <laughs> I have to still adapt, man. It's the Highlander newbie. <laughs> it takes some practice, man. Yes, but we got our first bedding anyway. Nice. Why is it? Could be dropped here. Um, yeah, just drop it there for now. Cheers. <laughs> the Philly, Philly more, Philly, Philly more. Or plaid, or plaid. Plaid, plaid. Or great kilt. Okay. No, no way! I'm sitting down for some food, man. <laughs> I'm laying down. <laughs> There's gonna be lots of ticks. Uh oh. Here goes my comfort uh, appreciation. Yeah. <laughs> you ruined it, man. <laughs> Sorry. No, thanks. Okay. It was a nice walk, though. Nice, nice. Scotland is nice. Yeah. Maybe you appreciate it more if you had more food in your belly. <laughs> Still, we have a handful today, huh? Hmm. <laughs> it's not like uh, a big feast. A big feast is right. Fair enough, enough. There's a river. There's fish. <laughs> Maybe. Have you got the energy to fish? No, not today at least. But well, with not having the energy, not fishing is not, never gonna give you more energy. Mm. Enough. <laughs> Any more firewood? I think that's all good. Huh? I think that's enough, yeah. This is my bed, it's my pillow, my sheepskin, my blankets and shirt, firewood for the night. That's Jules's bed. Ah, it's a beautiful evening right now. Hopefully, it stays like this. Otherwise, we are gonna get wet. Hey. Okay, my friends. I wish you all a good night. I hope for you see. We slept uh, good enough, didn't we, Tom? It was alright. I saw one time you turned yourself all the way to the fire with your feet. Yeah. But those got pretty cold. When it clear did the stars came out, it did get much colder. We had to put a lot more wood on the fire than yesterday. Mm. So uh, we've been hiking through some pretty desolate terrain and there's not much in the way of wild edibles. And uh, we've just finished our oat rations uh, and we've still got a big hike ahead of us. Um, but just next to where we've been camping, we found some little baby pig nuts. Pig nuts poking up and uh, the Highlanders would have eaten these if they had to so I, these are pretty young at the moment I could be wrong but if the plant is smaller then the tuber is bigger because that's where it's getting its energy from let's try dig them up it's a bit of a knack to this because the the roots 
that go down to the tuber are very delicate, so you have to be very careful. It's still quite a lot of effort for a small bit of carbohydrate. The white root that steadily gets thinner and thinner, the deeper it goes down. Hi, right, so there's a small pig nut. Well, the skin. Have you tried one of these before, Julius? No. Oh. But is this gonna save the day in calories? <laughs> <laughs> if you added up how many calories I just did to dig it up, they are very starchy. Wanna eat it? It's pretty sweet. Hmm. A bit nutty. Sweet nut. Sweet nut. I think it tastes like hazelnuts or something. Yeah. Not too shabby. Hey, bad. Maybe we should dig up another one. It <laughs> was a nice camping place after all. Huh? Yeah, it was. Good it didn't rain though. <laughs> no. Or flood. Man, with the rain and these things, it's gonna be a tough time, huh? It's probably gonna get heavy. The idea with wool though, it's uh, it's meant to still keep. An experience was this. Look at this shoot. I I, I, oh, I can't talk all the time. The shoot, right? Feel it more. Feel it more. Or plaid. Or plaid. Man, or great kill. I would wear it again in Scotland. Love to come uh, back. Yeah. Man, I love what you're doing. All the history stuff and uh, the Scottish nature. I've really enjoyed it. So, folks, go check out Van Dabi Dozy. He does really cool historic stuff in the Scottish Highlands and survival stuff. See, I saw lately a video of you. It was really dope. Restful, peaceful atmosphere in Scotland. He doing his Highlander stuff. You should definitely go check it out. Video here in the corner or there, there I think, there it will be. Yeah. Folks, so I see you're subscribing to uh, Van Dabi Dozy and of course to the Smooth Fix. And uh, like, uh, comment and uh, see you later on another video. Smooth Fix, ouwe. <laughs> nice one, bye! <laughs>